Okay guys, this is gonna be my first video in my multi-part series on P-pump swapping my truck. I'm gonna start off with taking the P-pump off my donor engine and then I'll move to my truck. So the first video is gonna be me taking the P-pump off a 1996 12 valve Cummins. And then the second video will be me taking the VE pump off of my 1991 12 valve Cummins. I have a couple of videos after this clip right here. The first one is going to be the 0 to 60 to my truck. And then the next one is going to be the 30 to 60. And I'm not really going off speed because this thing is dirt slow. What I am doing is trying to see how much coal it rolls. And then when I do the P-pump swap, I want it to blow more black smoke. And then I can throw a bigger turbo on there and then just make it faster eventually. And then I'll make videos for all this. So... This is the first video. I'm going to open up these clips and then start by taking the P-pump off the donor engine. Alright guys, first step to taking the P-pump off is to zip off this intake horn. They're all 10 millimeters. There's six of them. There's one, two, three, four, five, and then there's one more right here holding the dipstick in. It does matter where they go. These three are the same size. This one is the smallest, and these two are the same size. These two are long. These three are shorter. This one is the shortest. Alright, lift it off. And once you got the intake horn off, we can start pulling off these injector lines. It's a three-quarter. All these are loose, ready to come up. It's also gonna be a 10 millimeter to take this bolt and this bolt off. Once we got those off, these brackets are loose, then we can take this boost line off. It goes from the AFC housing and then back down and around into the wastegate for the turbo. For that, we use the 5 16 Just zip this off. And then I'm gonna take this hose clamp off right here. Mine is a quarter inch. All right, and that vacuum line is off. At least enough to where we can get this. Out of, at least enough to where we can get this stuff out of the way. Bend it up carefully. All right, now we're looking at the P pump. Again, use that three quarter. Bust all these. All right, there's one set of injector lines. To take the fuel shut off solenoid off, you just got two screws. One here, one here. These are five sixteenths. And these two bolts did hold the AFC housing, so you're definitely gonna have to put those back. These bolts are bottomed out, so I'm gonna have to go get some different ones once I actually install it in my truck. Also, I don't really know what's going on with that bolt, but we'll figure that out when time comes. All right, now we're gonna take this main fuel line off. It's a three quarter. And that's what this banjo bolt should look like. I'm just going to set this back in there until we get the other side of the line off. All right, to take this off, you just got to use your 10. Zip this off the top. The bolt has a flat spot on it. For this fitting, I'm using a 17. I'm going to throw this bolt back in there. That way I know where it goes. Now we can take this banjo bolt out. There's your main fuel line, the P-pump. Once again, just putting it back. That way I don't lose it. Now take the throttle linkage off. I'm using a 12 millimeter. It feels a little big, but it fits. And then a 10 millimeter on the nut. All right, and that side's off. And to take the rest of the linkage off, we'll just take this whole bracket off. You have a bolt here, bolt here, and a bolt here. They're all 10 millimeters. All right, and for this return spring, bend it down and pop it up. A little pain, 
and I'm just gonna put it right back on the lever itself so I don't lose that. Where this bracket mounts is that 10 millimeter right there. I'll zoom out, that way you can see exactly where it is. That's right there, and it's a 10 millimeter, and I'm just hitting it with, you know, just a couple extensions. Now right, just a couple more things. This 10 millimeter down here needs to go. This fuel fitting down here is a 9 16 And this plug right here is a three quarter. And to get this boost reference line off that goes to the AFC housing, it's just a half. To get the fan off, I just used a big pair of channel locks. And I put it right around that pulley. It's right there. I just use a crescent wrench. You turn it clockwise because it's reverse thread. It wasn't too tight, but it was a little tight, so you might need to hit with the hammer. Once the fan comes off, then you can zip the pulley off. They're all just 10 mils. We can take this housing off. Take the magnet off, it's just two 10 millimeter nuts. Swing the wires out of the way. Let's bracket out. All right, to take the harmonic balancer off, it's just a 15 and I zip these off with my impact. Just 15 mil. Then to get the harmonic balancer off, I took my Harbor Freight, took my Harbor Freight pry bar and I just went around it like this. Eventually it broke free enough to I can just wiggle it off. That's how you get the harmonic balancer off. Behind here, there's room for a 5 8 All right, and get the oil fill out. Just unscrew it. Now we can take the timing cover off. To remove the timing cover, everything is 10 millimeter, even these bolts. So I started taking a couple of these bolts out and I noticed that there's not really a pattern as far as I can tell, but some of them are short and some of them are not short. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull all of them out and I'm gonna write down on a piece of paper, a diagram of which one's short and which one is long. And I'll show you guys that paper when I'm done with it. I'm no artist and this is not very good and you probably can't read my handwriting, but I have L's and I have S's. The L stands for long bolts and the S Stands for short bolts. This one right here, it says extended and I have two arrows pointing to the same dot because I'm not smart, I guess. Um, those are these long bolts. And then uh, down here, I have one that says big washer pointing to this long bolt. It's a long bolt with a big washer on it. So I'll go ahead and screenshot this. Use it as a diagram for yourself or make your own. That's probably gonna be better than mine. But this works for me. Right, as we pull this off, uh, it was already, you can see how much oil is leaking right here. This seal was, this seal was leaking. So that was bad. So I'm definitely gonna have to get a new one of those for the swap. Right here's your oil pump. I'm replacing this as well when I do the swap in my truck. This right here is the P-pump gear. So before we take the cam gear off, we're gonna take the P-pump gear off. And I think you have to, you have to get this special puller I bought it on Amazon, I think it was like $13. I'll put the link in the description, but it's super easy. Once you take the nut and the washer off, you put your bolts through here. You put one bolt in there and one bolt in here. And I've already gotten it off and I got it off with just this little quarter inch ratchet and they're 10 mil, so it's really not on there too tight. To get the cam gear off, all the stuff I got at O'Reilly's, I just got a steering wheel puller and the slide hammer to go with it. You can use the torch, but I'm gonna use the heat gun. You can use a torch, but I'm gonna use a heat gun. I got this at Harbor Freight and I think it was like about $70. I try to get the Bauer, the Bauer heat gun, which is like 45 bucks, but they were sold out, so I had to get this one. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna screw this in until this rod is making contact with the cam. And then I'm gonna put pressure on it that way. And while there's pressure from this rod on the cam, 
I'm also gonna use the slide hammer part of it to add more pressure, all while heating it at the same time. And I'll put a time lapse so you guys can see it. All right guys, so I've been letting that heat gun sit there and I had a torch on this side and you can see that cam is barely moving. It's probably been about 20 minutes of constant heat again using the slide hammer and it's barely moved, but it's going. After you get that gear off, next step is to take this off, which is a three quarter. I don't know if you guys are gonna have this issue, but I had an issue where when I was backing this off, I was hitting this intake plate. So what I did is I tightened it back down and I used one of these deburring tools. I took out some of the surface up there and it allowed me to take it all the way out. But I still had to kind of just finagle it like that to get it out. Once this is loose, we have to get it over this fitting and do that. You kind of just gotta pull it forward and then push it back. And you wanna get it back as far as you can like that without bending the line. All right, that's probably about as far as I'm gonna get it. Then you're gonna need about a foot and a half to two foot of extensions, a swivel and a 15. You can see I already got these loose because I wanted to make sure I could do it before I was videoing for you guys. This top one's pretty easy. I had mine at about this angle when I broke it loose and this one came out pretty easy. Now you can see the other one way down here. This one's a pain to get to. I'll show you how to get to it. This one's trickier because you gotta come in at this angle below that fitting below this fitting that i'm pointing to right there that brass piece you gotta put it below that and then get it get it on there just like that this one this one's a pain it really sucks and once you get it on there good enough i gave mine a couple good taps just to make sure it ain't gonna come loose and then you just loosen it like the rest of them this one did come off decently easy too, but it's just a pain getting it on there. All right, I got it pretty loose, now I'm just gonna come in at this angle. Where it's a whole lot easier. And boom, there goes the hardest two bolts. Now these are both 15s as well. I used a wrench just because it was closest to me, but I'm sure a ratchet would do just fine. All right, and that should be it. Now I think you're gonna have to fight it a little bit to get it out, but that should be, in, should be everything to get it out. I backed the nut off where the injection pump gear goes, and I'm just gonna hit it with the dead blow. Let's see if that'll loosen it up. All right, guys, broke all the way free. And there we go. I already took the power steering bolts off because I was testing some stuff. They are 15 millimeters, super easy. All right, now to get the final bolts off, I think there's, there's about six or seven of them. They're all 10 millimeters. First two are long ones, they go down here. First two bolts are long, they go in the corners. And you got five short ones, all the same size, those go in the middle. One, two, three, four, five. You don't need to remove the power steering pump for this. Hit it a couple times probably. Yep, it broke loose already. It wasn't on there too bad. And this should all just come out. Yep, there we go.